This is a Salida SW200. This is a direct descendant of the legendary ETA-2824, and it is similar to the many variants of 2824s that exist. In this video, we'll introduce this movement and compare it with a Japanese movement like the NH-35. Before going into detail about the movement, let's learn how to handle it safely. Wear finger cots when you handle the movement. Your hands can leave fingerprints on the movement and over time it'll cause oxidation. When handling the movement, we have to be extremely careful with the balance wheel and escapement. These components determine the accuracy of your watch. The biggest piece of metal holding the movement together is the main plate. Most main plates extend to the side of the movement, so we can safely hold the movement by the edge of the plate. Avoid applying pressure to the rotor. Do not hold the movement like this. Do not adjust the date at this point as you don't know what time the movement is right now. Adjusting the date when the movement is near midnight can cause damage to the date change mechanism. The SW200 has a detachable hour wheel. It should come installed by default, but it may fall out during assembly. That's why we recommend removing both the hour wheel and the spring first. Put them aside in a safe place and reinstall them before the installation of the dial. With the safety precautions out of the way, let's look at the SW200 and learn why Swiss movements are still considered the more premium options in mechanical movements. We'll compare it with a Japanese movement, a Seiko NH35. While comparing the NH35 and SW200 isn't fair, because they exist in a different price bracket, this comparison should show you how Swiss and Japanese movements differ in their underlying design philosophy. First, let's look at the size and dimensions of the movements. The SW200 has a diameter of 25.6 mm and is 4.60 mm thick, while the NH35 has a diameter of 27.4 mm and a thickness of 5.3 mm. The SW200 obviously has the smaller footprint, which gives you a smaller watch overall. But watch size is often a matter of preference. The SW200 rotor is also tapered, allowing for a slimmer design for the case. The SW200 also wins out in the weight department, weighing only about 11.4 grams over the NH35's 13.1 grams. That's less of a burden on your wrist. Let's now look at the movement closely. On the NH35, you can see some plastic parts, like this component here that controls the date change mechanism. On the SW200, the same component is made with metal. This doesn't affect the function per se, but a metal part will likely be more durable. You can then try to wind it up. The winding gear feels and sounds tighter on the SW200, while the Japanese counterpart feels coarse to turn. This is due to the SW200 having a tighter tolerance with its parts, including the gears, and thus there is less gap between the gears, resulting in a smoother winding sound. This tighter tolerance also shows when the date transitions. On a NH35, the date transition happens way before midnight, so you're left with more than an hour when you can't see clearly what the date is. On a SW200, the date transition happens much closer to midnight. And when the transition hits, the transition is more snappy as well. Turning over the movement, we can see that the SW200's balance wheel is equipped with a fine-tuning mechanism, while the NH35 only offers a basic but functional regulator. Look closely at the NH35. You can see that the backplate is one entire piece. This makes sense for them because it makes assembly more straightforward. The SW200 meanwhile has a backplate divided according to the functions of the gears it covers. This makes servicing more approachable as you don't have to align the gears in one go. So you can see that one is designed for ease of manufacturing, while the other takes into account the ease of servicing. Let's now look at the finishing. With these close-up shots, we can see that the SW200 has a better finishing, with more refined grains and lines and more uniform surface. While this is mostly aesthetic, some finishing is functional in the sense that it can trap tiny dust particles. That covers most of the difference between a Swiss and Japanese movement. If you have been paying attention, you should notice that most of the differences aren't functional. Japanese movements are still very highly regarded for their quality and durability. 
What will determine the performance of your movement is whether it is well maintained and well regulated, which if you're interested, we have a complete guide on it. Feel free to watch that after you assemble this movement into a watch. Swiss movements give you more than that performance. It gives you more of that unmeasurable stuff that we call quality. And that shows their dedication of the mechanical crafts. Now you should be able to appreciate these Swiss quality mechanical movements more. So what's next? Take this movement and assemble it into your own watch.